Okay, so for this video, we're gonna pick up, pick up exactly where we left off. We have styled this, we've added a mail to link. We've got our links sort of functional for now. We're gonna come back and edit these later, but I wanna <laughs> add my gallery now. So I wanna actually get a swap image gallery that will let me click these objects and change the image on the stage here. Now it's not too hard. The hardest part is actually getting these little things to stay where you want them to stay. But we're gonna do that once again with the table. So it's not too bad. We'll come back to Dreamweaver. I'm gonna click in this box. I'm gonna to go to my source code and I'm gonna find this middle div. Now sometimes it's hard to get a hold of them because when you click it'll click the wrong one. So I'm gonna to have to actually scroll and find it. So there's my welcome one. Uh, let's see, welcome, welcome, welcome text, that's part of the div, and now I found it. So ID div class gallery. I'm gonna bring this div up just to neaten up my code. I'm gonna create enter space there, same thing here. So I'm just doing this to make it more visible that when I walk through my code, I know what I'm looking at. I'm gonna click inside the, the, uh, the gallery div, I see nothing happened there, and I'm gonna insert that first div for the stage. So insert, layout objects, div tag. You should be an expert at this by the end. Now I'm going to call this one stage. I think that name helps me remember that that's the staging area for all the images. It's just what I call it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna create a new rule. And in this case, I can leave this once again as um, a specific name selector rule, but I wanna do it as a class rule. I just like to do that. And I'm gonna call it stage. And I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna get the box shape right. So I'm gonna come back to InDesign to check what size it is. So this one is 600 by 400. I can tell it probably has the same about 50 padding top and 90 padding left. So 600 by 400 with 40, 90, or 50, 90 padding. So 600 by 400. You'll see a trend here. I made everything 400 height. I tried to keep everything really similar so that it would be easy to add all my styling and it wouldn't be too complicated. I'm going to uncheck same for all for margins. I'm going to add 50 to the top. And to the left, I'm going to add that same 90. I'm also going to set this one to float left because I know I'm going to have something next to it that needs to float to the right. So that being said, that should be done. And I click OK, OK, and it will pop right in. You can see it's, it's nicely aligned with everything. It's all there. So now all I have to do is delete this text. I'm selected in the div properly, and I'm going to insert an image. Now I'm going to go to my gallery images. You can see that in my files I've made them all the same size. You can actually look at the sizes right here. So I did that for a reason. I did the same with my thumbnails, but I'm going to put gallery one in. I'm going to place it and I'm going to call this one, I think it's a Ferris wheel. And I'm going to click OK. So Ferris wheel is here. Now the first thing you want to do before you forget is while you've selected this image, you need to name this image. And the reason you will see in a moment when we add our swap image behavior, I'm going to call this one stage as well. So it'll be easy to pick out. It's not too, too hard. So I'll call that one stage. Click out and there we go. So now I can click after this div. So let's see where we are. Div, da 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 da, da right here. So right after this div, make some space there so I can see. And now I'm going to add a div that I can put my table in for my thumbnails. So I am going to go to insert layout objects, div tag. I'm going to call this one uh, thumbnails so I know what it is. I'm going to create a new CSS rule called thumbnails. Um, in this case I will make it a class rule again just so they match. It's not really important in this case. What I'm, I'm not going to use this class again so it's okay to do it either way. Click OK. And now there's some things I don't really know about this class yet. I actually don't really know what size I'm going to need it to be but I can kind of I might be able to guess a little bit. So I'm going to go to my InDesign. You see, I don't actually have a box prepared here to measure. But if I select all of these together, together they're about 390 pixels. So I think if I make a 400 pixel by 100 pixel box, I'll be able to contain them all. So let's make, go to box. Let's make it uh, 400 height to match by 100 width. Now margin and padding, this should be all relatively the same. It looks like I'm going to set this at 90 again. It looks a little different actually, so let's check with a box. I'm going to draw a little rectangle in between, and it looks like that's actually 106 pixels, so I may want to set that farther in. I think I'm actually just going to set it to 90 so that it's all really consistent, but I could adjust that if I needed to. So I'm going to do margin top to 50, and I'm going to do margin right 
to 90 and I'm going to make sure to set this item to float right. So these are the kind of the properties you're going to be continuously setting for a lot of different things. I'm going to click OK and it's going to ask me if everything's good. I'm going to hit OK again and now I have a nice box ready to go with my thumbnails. So that's nice and neat. So a couple ways I could add my thumbnails. I could add a table here and I may do that but let me test something else first. If I delete this content and I just insert the images here insert image thumb one click OK and then if I click next to that insert image thumb two and click OK it's gonna drop right below it so I could just do it like this and kinda of play with how I wanna adjust them that way insert image thumb three so let's try it this way first because the table sometimes can be a little problematic so here we go, I've got that. Now I have to add a couple little things here to get these to sort of space out. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my actual box here, my uh, the box that's containing them all called thumbnails. I've got the class selected already by selecting that. And I'm going to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom so that they kind of line up a little bit. So I may add a little bit of padding there if I want. I can do that. I can come here and I can go to padding, uncheck same for all, and I can add five padding to the top and five padding to the bottom and click OK and that'll kind of push them down into the box. Now what I need to do here is I can tell, I can give these a class as well or give them some kind of information so that they know how to sit. So because these are called images, I can actually change the image class which is already built into the code here. So there should be somewhere something called a image. So this property currently has no properties applied to it. But if you apply something to this, it will apply to all images. That could be a problem because I actually don't want it to apply to all of these. Let's show you what kind of happens there. So let's say I wanted to add 20 top margin to these. If I click edit rule, go to box and add 20 top margin. Watch what's going to happen. It's going to be very not good usually. Um, usually it will apply to all of them. In this case, it didn't apply. So we got some kind of disconnect between what's happening here and what's happening there. I'm going to delete that property. And instead, I'm going to show you how, after the fact, you can add these into a div and then give them a property. So in the case of this, I already have my images here. They're kind of tight. If I click this one, I can see kind of where they are. I'm going to hit enter in the code to bring them down a little bit. And I'm going to space them out so I can see the three different images. So there they are. So let's say you have these images in here and you want to get them spaced out properly in a way that works. Now you can, I believe, add a class right to the image. So let's try that. So let's say class thumb. Close that and hit space. I'm going to copy that piece of code and I'm going to apply it to all of the others by adding it into their opening tag. So, bloop, bloop. so there they are. Now nothing's going to happen because there's no class called thumb. I can go to my CSS, however, and add that class in. So this is kind of another little tidbit of how to write it in your code yourself, a little more advanced. I'm just going to come to the bottom. I'm going to hit period, thumb, opening, closing bracket. And now I've created that class. I can then hand write in the code, or it now exists here. I can just edit the code here and do something like box, margin, top, 20. And let's click OK and see how that looks. So that didn't quite do what we wanted. So maybe it didn't really apply to the image in the way we wanted. That's fine. I'm going to show you how I would actually do this. So these are like little things that you should know that work or don't work. I'm going to delete the class thumb here. I'm actually going to copy it and delete it from all three. Because I'm going to quickly solve the problem of these images by wrapping them in divs. So they've already been made. They're already here. I, can, I don't have to delete them, reinsert divs, and then place them in there. I can just wrap them in a div by coming into the code and literally writing div, close that tag, and then go to the end and close the div. So basically just adding those tags will place them in the box. Now nothing visually is going to change, but if I come into the opening div tag and paste in class thumb, watch this should now adjust to match any of the code that's applied to thumb. So if thumb margin top is set to 20, it should apply to this. Now I may have to set a size to this in order for this to actually function. So let's set a size to 100 by 100. Hit apply, click OK, and there we go. So that should push them down. Let's check and see what it actually looks like in the browser to see if I'm having some issue there. Because that should function. So refresh. 
I'm seeing a little bit of the padding is applying here, but it's not quite right. So let's go back and troubleshoot that and find out what's happening. So I'm going to grab these, come back to my code. I'm going to look here. I've got div class thumbnails, ID thumbnails. I've got div class thumb spelled the same. Let's wrap these all into div and do that. Class equals thumb. Close that. Close that div. And the same goes for this. So div class equals thumb. And that way. And then close this one in a div as well. So it looks like I've got an extra div here. Let's see where that is. Oh, nope, forgot to close that. There we go. So now they're all in a div. We'll hit refresh. We've broken something. So look what happened here. We've accidentally not closed this div. This is something you need to see happening because it happens all the time. So now if I close that div, it'll fix it. And look, my padding is actually added here. So it's actually working now better than it was before. So I've got my five padding applied here. I've got this 20. I may need to adjust that a little bit. So let's add margin top. Let's check that to, let's try, let's try 40 and see kind of what happens. So those look better. That's already looking a little better. Let's try 45. There we go. That looks pretty close. I can actually probably come back to the div class they're contained in called thumbnails, which should be somewhere right around there, thumbnails. And I can adjust the padding here as well because you can see I actually had some padding in the box there. So I can take that padding off. I can come back to my thumb class, which is right there down at the bottom. And I can adjust this. Maybe 47 will look right. So there we go. Those look much better. Let's try 48. That's a nice even number. That looks fine for now. Let's actually look at these in the browser. So that was something important to know is when you handwrite your tags in, it will try and close to the next closing tag. And if you delete the tags or don't have your right number of tags, you're going to have a lot of issues. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to save the CSS and I'm going to open it in Firefox and take a look. So that looks much better. So that is another way of getting things to line up not using a table is that you can create a div class that causes them to pad an equal amount around. So that looks great, but my thumbnails don't function yet. So the last thing I'm going to show in this video is how to create a swap image gallery effect. It's really easy. So to get to that, you have to find your behaviors panel. And you'll notice it's not up here. I don't see anything that's called behaviors. So I have to go to window and I have to find behaviors, which is actually here. It's not server behaviors, it's behaviors. I'm going to pop that up and it's, going to, it's actually called tag inspector in here, but it's behaviors. So I can click each thumbnail and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a behavior to the thumbnail that tells it to swap this image with a new image. So I'm going to click the Ferris wheel, I'm going to add a behavior, and I'm going to say swap image. Now the reason we named that first image stage is simply so we could find it when we get to the stage. So click stage and then choose the image you want it to swap. In this case it won't look like it does anything yet because it's the same image. So gallery one, click open. And then I'm going to uncheck restore images on mouse out because I want this to be a click. I don't want that image to suddenly swap back in. So I'm going to click uncheck that. I'm going to click OK. And then the last thing I'm going to do is in the behaviors panel, instead of on mouse over, I'm going to say on click. So you can say on mouse up when the mouse is let go, or you can say on click. So we'll do on click. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two. So grab this thumbnail, the actual image, add a behavior. It's going to say swap image click stage once again, uncheck restore images on mouse out, and choose your next gallery image, your full size gallery image. Click OK, and click OK, change this to on click, and then we'll do that for the final one, and I'll, let, I'll show you what it looks like in the code, and we'll preview the gallery. So add behavior, swap image, check stage, uncheck restore on mouse out, browse, and find your final gallery image. So you just have to do this for every thumbnail you have. It's a really basic way of creating a gallery, really simple. Click OK, and then click on click. It should be right there. So let's go look at the code and see what that did. So something kind of interesting happened. It added this code in automatically for me. So you can see in div class thumb, I have image source, images, thumb three, width 100, height 100. And then it added a behavior. It says on click equals mm swap image stage with images gallery three. So you can actually come into the code and write this yourself, but it's a lot easier to do it from the behaviors panel. I'm going to save, and then I'm going to preview in Firefox, and we're going to take a look at this. 
So now when I click the thumbnails, really easy, it swaps them. I could click them in any order. You can notice that works. Now the one other thing you may want to do with a swap image is to add a hover effect and you can do that. But I'll show that when we get to the next video where we do all the fine tuning. We'll add some nice hover effects on these where maybe they gray out a little bit or change color and we'll tighten up, we'll add a secondary link style maybe and do a couple little extra things to get it all looking really good. So that is really the essentials of adding the gallery and getting that functional as well as getting your thumbnails to line up. So there's a couple different ways. We can go back and do the table method like this. If you have trouble with that, try just making them individual divs and moving them around using the padding and the margin. So that being done, that is the last of this video.